Hello everyone and welcome back to Revit Snippets. Great tips you can learn in just a few minutes. This video is sponsored by Tagatize, the easiest way to run tag all on multiple Revit views and sheets. Also, say goodbye to overlapping tags. Tagatize will turn this into this. Try Tagatize completely for free using the link in this video's description. Today, let's do some more freeform modeling in Dynamo. I'll show you how to generate this beautiful building facade. It looks really dynamic thanks to the twisting louvers. The script we create will be fully parametric, so you will be able to adjust the size, thickness, and openness of all louvers in this system. I will also show you how to set the material for the generated louvers so they can look perfect in your renderings. If you don't have much time and just want to run this script right away, simply find in the video's description a link to download this script directly. If you, however, want to learn to code this yourself, let me show you how right now, step by step. By the way, if you are new to this channel, make sure to subscribe now because we do tutorials like this every single week. Okay, let's begin. First things first, let's create a conceptual mass family to define our form. Make sure to select the right family template for the mass. Once inside the family editor, let's open the plan view. I'll draw a quick line of a length of 30 meters. This will be the length of our facade. Next, I'll turn it into a reference line and then duplicate it. A few meters from it this way will do. We can now switch to the 3D view to create the surface. An easy way to do that is to copy the existing level 1 up to create level 2. I can then select the first line we created, copy it and then paste it aligned to level 2. With the new line in place, I can select the original one as well, and then click Create Form. As you can see, it's showing the preview of a new revolved solid. However, we only want a simple surface, so use your up or down arrow key to cycle to that option, and press Enter to select it. Next, I will use the same method to create another surface from the two lines on level 1. Revit will once again propose a revolved solid, but I would choose a simple surface instead. That looks pretty good. However, I want the vertical face to be a bit closer to the front back plane. So let's select its driving lines, orient ourselves to a suitable view, and then move the selected lines. The surface will move with those lines accordingly. Now, it's time to draw our attractor surfaces. These will define which regions on the main facade we want the louvers to twist. I'll draw those attractors on the front back reference plane, so let's switch to a suitable elevation view to do that. Before drawing anything here, let's set the active work plane to be the front back reference plane. Next, we can draw the first attractor curve using an ellipse. To make the facade more interesting, I'll go ahead and add two more ellipses slightly higher up. Back to the 3D view, I can see all the new ellipses. However, the higher ones seem to be lying on the facade surface. I must have made a mistake while drawing them. Luckily, this is easy to fix. I can simply select those ellipses and change their work plane to the correct one like this. Alright, we can now turn those ellipses into attractor surfaces. To do that, select each curve and click Create Form. Revit will give you a few options. Simply pick the flat surface one. Alternatively, you can create an extrusion and then immediately delete the top surfaces of the new solid. That will leave us with just a single surface where our ellipse is. And with that, our conceptual mass is now ready for the next step. Feel free to use your own gravel mass. If you want to use mine, however, just download it using a link in the video description. Moving on, we need to place this mass inside a project model. I'll quickly create a new desk project using the architecture template. Then I'll go back to the mass family and load it into the new project. Feel free to place it anywhere that makes sense for you. For me, it'll be here. In the 3D view, I can now see the placed mass in all its glory. Let me hide the levels here for an even cleaner view. Before switching to Dynamo, a quick shout out to our sponsor, Targetize. With Targetize, it's never been easier to tag multiple Revit categories at once using your favorite tagging styles. Say goodbye to spending countless hours untangling Revit tags. After running Targetize on this view, for example, all my tags are perfectly readable. None of them overlaps with their hosts or other elements in the view. If I think this tag, for example, can be placed better, I can just select it and click Next to tell Targetize to try the next possible tag position. 
Each time I click the button, Tagitize moves the tag for me, and I can keep doing this until it gets to a tag position I like. There we go. That's much better. Try Tagitize completely for free today using the link in this video's description. I will now open Dynamo and create a new script. The first thing we need to do is import the necessary mass geometries from Revit. First, I'll add a select edge node and use it to select this edge at the back of the mass. Next, I'll attempt to extract from this edge a series of points at regular intervals. For example, one point every 500 millimeters along this edge until the whole edge is covered. The node to do that is curve point at segment length. However, this node requires a list of segment lengths. I'll generate these length values using another node called range. This node will give us a series of numbers between the start and end values. Each number will be greater than the value that comes before it by the step value. I'll start with a step value of 500 millimeters, but feel free to pick another value that works for you. The start value is zero, which is fine. However, I'll need to get the end value from the edge. This should be the total edge length because we intend to sample points along the entire edge. That's easy enough. I'll just need this curve length node to get the end value, which is the total length of the edge we picked, and then hook it up to the range node. I can then add another node to specify the segment length. With all that in place, I can now add, connect, and then run the point at segment length node. Let me also turn on the Dynamo Geometry Preview in Revit. There we go. Now all the points I need are here. Next, we need to slide the surface using some cut planes. I'll create one cut plane at each point we have sampled. To do that, let's drop in here a new plane by origin normal known. The normal vector of these planes will be the direction of the line. There's a handy node called line direction that is perfect for getting that direction as a vector. The plane origins will be the points we generated. Now let's add a few select face nodes and use them to pick the main vertical surface for our new facade. The idea here is that I can use the cut planes created earlier to slice this surface. To do that, we can use the geometry intersect node. This takes in the surface geometry and also takes the cut planes from the other input port. If I run the script now, you will see the new node only returns one intersection line. This is because we have only one input surface but many cut planes. To use all input planes against the single surface, let's change the lacing mode of this node to longest and rerun the script. There we go. You can see the slicing operation has worked as expected. We now have a series of intersection lines on the surface ready to be turned into twisting louvers. These lines are individual lists though, so let me flatten the result here. However, here's a caveat. If a plane doesn't intersect a surface, it will produce an empty list here. We need to remove those lists or they will cause issues in the next step. To clean them up, I can query each sublist to see if it's empty like this. Then, I can use a filter by Boolean mask to separate empty lists from populated ones. The empty ones can be ignored. The lists that contain at least one curve are valid and can be used for the next step. Make sure to enable use levels on this node if necessary. I can then safely feed valid lists to the next node called polycurve by joint curves. This ensures that for each cut plane, I'll only have one intersection polycurve on the surface. With that done, I can now add an explode node to obtain the line inside each polycurve. What we can do on these lines is generate points along each one. Each of these points will later host the profiles of our new twisting louvers. To generate these points, I can use the same method shown at the beginning of this script. That means getting a number range starting at zero and ending with the total length of the mass edge we picked at the beginning. This time, I'll use a segment length of two meters. You can clearly see the range of segment length values there. That will then give me a valid list of segment lengths to generate points using the point at segment length node. Let's quickly rerun the script to see if it works. Very nice. Now I have all these points distributed evenly along each intersection line. For the next step, we need to get the direction of the first edge we picked in this script. I'll use a watch node to copy that information here for convenience. With the vector available here, I don't need to keep panning back to the start of the script to access it. The next step in our game plan is to generate a louver profile at each sampled point location. 
To do that, I'll first copy each point along the line direction using a geometry translate node. Let's use the edge direction vector and list of points we sampled earlier as inputs to this new node. I'll use a distance of 200 millimeters for this translation. If we look at these points from the top now, you can clearly see each point now has a copy on the left of it. To copy the same points to the right, let's duplicate the geometry translate node. The trick now is to reverse the line direction using this new reverse node. We can use the same distance of 200 from before. There we go. Now we can see the second set of points in Revit. The next step is easy. Let's connect each pair of points using a new line by start and in points node. The input order here doesn't really matter. Same as before, Revit has shown the expected result right away. With that ready, we can now start introducing attractor surfaces into the script. I'll start by creating a select face node and then use it to select the first ellipse. Next, I'll copy the node twice and do the same procedure to select the other two ellipses. Next, I'll put all three faces on the same list and then flatten it. Flattening the list will allow me to manipulate it easily in the upcoming steps, which will involve lots of geometry handling. The goal is to join those into a single surface. I can do exactly that using a surface by union node. It takes in all three faces and merges them all into one. I can also group these nodes to make it clear they are for attractor selection. Now here's the most important part of the script. We'll use a new geometry distance 2 node to compute the distance between each louver profile and the attractor surface. You can see it has given me a long list of distances here. Now we need to post-process this list to achieve the desired effect of the design. First, I'll flatten the list to then get its maximum value. This is the distance from the furthest profile to the attractor surface. Here, I want to make it so that the script shouldn't try to rotate profiles too far from the attractor. At the locations of those outliers, the louvers should remain closed. So let's just leave those profiles as they are. What that means is, for all distances in the list that are larger than a certain cutoff value, I want to replace them with just that same cutoff value. This is easy to do. I can use a new replace by condition node together with a greater than or equal condition like this. For the condition, let's make it so that for all distances that are greater than or equal to 50% of the maximum distance in the entire system, we will replace those with the maximum distance. With that, I should be able to get a normalized list of distances. Let me also expand the result of the nodes leading to it to make the process clearer. To show you again what we did there, let me add a watch node to show the original distances next to the normalized ones. We saw previously that the max distance is about 7.8 meters. Half of that is about 3.9 meters. You can see here that all original distances that are greater than 3.9 meters have been replaced with the max value of 7.8. Those that are smaller than 3.9 meters still have the same values as before. All right, now we are ready to remap those distances into a list of rotation angles for the profiles. For that, I'll use a new math remap range node. The new min value will be minus 90 degrees for fully opened profiles, and the new max value will be zero for fully closed ones. Let's run the script and inspect the remapped angle values. As you can see, for distances greater than 3.9 meters, the profile angles will be zero. This means we won't rotate these profiles and leave the louvers in the closed state at those locations. On the other hand, profiles closest to the attractor surface have now received angles between minus 90 and 0 degrees. If it's minus 90 degrees, the profile will be rotated to a fully open position. For any angles in between the two extremes, the profile will be rotated by that exact value to give us a smooth transition between the open and closed sections of the facade. With all that in place, let's actually rotate some profile, shall we? I'll add a geometry rotate node here and feed into it the angle values. For the axis, let's use the z-axis since we want to rotate the profiles on the xy plane. The geometries to be rotated will be our profile lines. And for the origin of each rotation, let's simply use the location point of each profile. Let's run the script now. I'll orient the view to look at the facade from the top so we can clearly see the profiles before and after states. There we go. I can see each vertical louver now has multiple profiles rotated to slightly different angles. We can even see them in 3D to verify that the biggest rotations has happened to profiles closest to the attractor surfaces. Now, to finish the script, 
let's create loft surfaces between those profiles. There we go. Now I can see the profile surface in 3D, both in Revit and in Dynamo. To show them clearly, let me just quickly hide the geometry preview of all other previous nodes. And voila! It's clear that each louver has successfully followed its rotated profiles. The facade has started to look much more interesting. Anyway, objects of the real world obviously need depth. Let's add a surface thicken node here to turn our louver surfaces into solids. I use a thickness of 50 millimeters, but feel free to adjust this value based on your requirements. Let's now rerun the script. This step is heavy though, so please be patient if your dynamo took a few minutes to finish thickening all louvers. Once that's done, the result should look like this. All that's left to do is import Dynamo solids into Revit. I'll do that with a new Import Instance by Geometries node. There we go. To show the result more cleanly, let's turn off massing in this view. Then we can turn on Ambient Shadow as well. To apply a material to the imported objects, just go to Manage and select Object Styles. Under the Imported Objects tab, find the new instance we imported, and then set its material using the button at the end of its row. I'll do it for its sublayer too, just to be thorough. And there you have it, the fully parametric facade with your own custom materials. Before you go, check out our sponsor, Tagitize. Save all your tagging styles in one place, and tag one or several views or sheets at once. Also, say goodbye to overlapping tags. Simply review generated tags and make any final tweaks with the handy tag audit commands. Try Tagitize completely for free using the link in this video's description. There's also a link in the description to download the script we built together today. Even more, if you want to master Python scripting in Dynamo to create this kind of script yourself, check out my full online Python for Dynamo course. Also link to in the video description. If you like this lesson and want more like this every single week, make sure to subscribe to this channel now. For now, have a good day and I'll see you in the next tutorial.